is the dry out or the drying up of the venture capital market in the industrial biotech sector the most responsible for the declining revenue and the, or the struggling revenue of the, of the Ginkgo Bioworks foundry and the company as a whole? This is relating to a lot of types of questions that Jason has been getting. And it's funny because at this point, he still draws to our attention about downstream value shares and royalty. When personally, I think if we're just being objective and impartial as people who are outside of Ginkgo Bioworks, I really doubt that the downstream value share or the royalty is going to play a significant role or, or a very dominant role in their revenue profiles and the expected number of projects or lucrative financial opportunities that they're going to get on in, from their from their um from their foundry in the future and i think that furthermore more or moreover um the fact that jason is always trying to draw our attention to the fact that industrial biotech has been hit very hard with higher interest rates i think it really just demonstrates a lot of how that market in that that market within the biotechnology sector was ran even before the interest rates were kept so high and inflation had reached a very, you know, like almost 10%. Even though it's going down now, it doesn't mean that the fact that the rate of decrease of it, of inflation is going down doesn't at all mean that companies are going to start hiring people and giving people many opportunities for work again like before. They're still probably going to cut and lay off even more while they're waiting for the rate of inflation to go back down to this mythical, completely you know, completely unattainable or very difficult to obtain uh, goal for inflation that the Federal Reserve has been having. But I think that Jason's Jason's automatic defense to talk about the industrial biotech sector as a whole and how this industry has been hit very hard with higher interest rates and everything, it just demonstrates that just like how he was able to gain so much capital for Ginkgo Bioworks and his company by speaking in generalities, that level of generality in biology or in, you know, and how many biotech companies market themselves or talk about themselves, it's very susceptible to either a difficult economy because it would obviously force a lot of people and a lot of investors to really, you know, to really, uh, to really thoroughly investigate whether whatever the company, whatever service or product the company is trying to offer, whether it can actually end up delivering on that. And I think that this isn't just for biotech, it's for a lot of types of industries, like you can look at quantum computing and other types of areas, because a lot of those areas, they state all these conjectured problems or conjectured applications, if you will, of these either next generation computers, which are just like these large scale experiments that have to be carried out almost as close to absolute zero, a fraction of a degree above absolute zero, so that the information that's used for different types of algorithms and time evolution can be preserved. And it's very much like the same type of thing in biology because they want to either learn about some very important genetic code that could have a large therapeutic type of application in which would bring in a lot of downstream value for Ginkgo Bioworks. But the fact is that even with millions of dollars of investment into their facilities, as well as given by the fact that they're going to open up another facility, which they've already invested $7 million into this quarter, and I'm sure at least they're continuing to invest into. It just seems kind of difficult about whether they would actually have enough throughput, as I've been saying across many different types of commercial applications that they're using their foundry for, and whether this is enough throughput to actually result in a very uh, successful commercial product that can maybe pass, pass clinical trials, as well as any other broader type of regulatory approval, as well as regulatory scrutiny that would lead to some type of, uh, you know, the execution of some type of royalty share or downstream value share. And I think that Jason just needs to forget about downstream value share altogether, because even if, say, they do make a significant advancement in the RNA therapeutic work with Pfizer, it could be a long time and even the order of like four or five years away, or even a couple of years away, at the very least, to actually go through the clinical trial, as well as maybe any other type of regulatory stages that could be associated with emerging RNA, mRNA or RNA vaccine technology that would actually result in the type of downstream value share that they're talking about. 